Hello everyone, Mr. John here from Air Team Institute with this week's Thursday tidbit where we're going to be talking about absolute values and specifically how you can use algebra to help with them. Most of us know the absolute value of x as the distance from 0 to x, right? So this makes a positive number stay positive. This makes a negative number become positive. And in some situations, it's helpful to have a little bit more of a formal definition for this absolute value. So algebraically, we can write that the absolute value of x, well, this is x if x is greater than or equal to 0. So positive numbers stay positive in this top portion here. And what happens to negative numbers? Well, negative numbers become positive. So what's a way to make a number positive? We can multiply it by negative 1. So this becomes negative x if x starts out as a negative number. Now, the true power of this is when you apply this to functions, right? Anytime you have variables in algebra, you can make substitutions. So if we replace x by a function or something, the absolute value of that function is the normal function as long as that function is positive, and it is negative that function if that function is negative. So we have the same type of plus or minus portion, but now it depends on whether that function is positive or negative. So let's take a look then at one example. Suppose we want to solve this equation. So we want to solve the equation absolute value of 2x minus 4, and we want that to be equal to x plus 1. Now, looking at the absolute value here, remember our definition. We have a function here. So that function is itself. So it's 2x minus 4. When that function is non-negative or greater than or equal to 0, so when is 2x minus 4 greater than or equal to 0? Well, that will happen as long as x is greater than 2. Because when we plug in 2, we get 0, and this is a line increasing from there. So it's negative that function, so negative 2x minus 4. Or if you wanted negative 2x plus 4, which we'll write in a second, when x is less than 2. So this really gives us two cases to consider here when we're solving. So when x is greater than or equal to 2, we have 2x minus 4 is equal to x plus 1. So that is a linear equation, right? We know how to solve that. We add 4 on both sides, um, subtract x on both sides. So here we're actually just going to get x is equal to 5. In the other case, we have x is less than 2. Then, as I mentioned before, here we are solving this equation. Negative 2x plus 4 is equal to x plus 1. So here we can move the x's around. We are going to have then 3 is equal to 3x. And this tells us that x is equal to one. So now we have found the two solutions we have in this case. One thing just to check really quick, is 5 greater than or equal to 2? Yep. Is 1 less than 2? Yep. So these both work in the two cases we were considering. So now we have solved the equation. Thanks for watching this video today. Check back each Thursday for a new tidbit, and hopefully I'll see everybody practicing on our Zimmel site. Goodbye.